Hey everybody, Tech Chucker here today to show you how I made the windows on my brownstone project. In this video, we'll build windows that do not open, or transom windows. In a future video, we'll see how to make the double hung version of this window. Here's a list of materials you'll need to complete this project. You can also find this list in the description below. Note that you can use any size wood that fits your project. I also recommend checking out my ripping wood video where I walk you through making your own boards out of larger sheets of stock wood. Check the description below for the link to this video. Here's a list of tools you'll need. I highly recommend you avoid using a low temperature hot glue gun on this project. The glue just won't hold as strong and you'll have to redo a lot of your work. The higher temperature glue will provide a much stronger joint. Just be careful because it's considerably hotter, obviously, so don't burn yourself. So consider this my disclaimer. We're going to begin by assembling the window jam, so grab your square and hot glue gun. Before you start gluing your pieces together, you'll want to determine if the top or side pieces will overlap and ensure you are consistent with this, otherwise you'll end up with a lopsided window. I've chosen to make my top and bottom boards the overlap. Make sure you have all the half inch boards handy and start with one long and one short. Line one up flush with the square, then apply a very small bead of glue on the edge of the second board. Quickly press the board into position as shown in the picture. You'll need to make sure the joint is as close to 90 degrees as possible. Allow the glue a couple seconds to cure then wipe away the excess. Unfortunately, the ideal time to do this is barely after the glue is no longer scalding hot, so be very careful or you'll actually burn yourself. Repeat these steps until all pieces are glued together. You'll find the final joint is harder to complete if all your joints are 90 degrees. You should be able to pull the joints apart to get the glue on, then apply it pressure. Something to be mindful of when I assemble my boards, I make sure I always have the same edge of my assembled jam facing down, flush with my work surface. This will ensure a perfectly flat surface on one side. If the edge isn't perfect, you can sand it to get that flat surface you need. Another helpful tip, I always mark the left jam with an L and then an arrow pointing up, so I have a reference point. This is particularly helpful if you are assembling a window that isn't uniform in measurement. It's also helpful so you can remember which surface is going to be your front facing surface, the one that needs to be faced down on your work surface. I prefer to place my markings on a surface I know will be covered, so I don't have to worry about paint covering my markings. Next we need to assemble the rails. This is the most difficult because we want the rails to fit perfectly inside the jam. To do this, we need to cut 45 degree angles on each end of each rail. My square allows me to adjust to any angle. If yours doesn't, you'll need to get one that does. You can eyeball it, but the wrong angle will cause your joints to have gaps and will result in a window that is not perfectly square. If your measurements are correct, you should be able to lay your jam on top of your rails and it should fit perfectly inside. If it doesn't, you'll need to trim some excess off. If there's too much space and the fit is very loose, you might consider cutting a new rail. Use the same process for assembling the rails as you did with the jam. Start with one short and one long board, laying the first flush with your square, making sure you set your square back to 90 degrees. Apply a small bead of glue to the cut surface of the other rail piece, then quickly press the rails together, applying even pressure on each rail. Make sure you're pushing both pieces toward the center of the 90 degree joint. And make sure you're pushing the pieces down so they are tight to the work surface. This will ensure you get a perfectly flat seam. Wipe away any excess glue from the joint each time. You may find with this joint there is more excess glue than can easily be wiped away. For this, try using a loose utility blade to cut away the excess. Repeat these steps on the remaining joints. When you get to the final joint, you'll need to pull the joints apart a bit so you can apply the last bead of glue, then quickly return the entire rail to your square and push the final joint into the 90 degree corner. 
After the glue has set, sand each surface of the rail to ensure each joint is perfectly even. This will help remove the last remaining remnants of excess glue. Don't apply too much pressure as you sand though. You don't want to remove too much wood and you don't want your joints to come apart. Before you proceed, you may need to remove excess glue from the inside of the jam joints. This excess glue will prevent the rail from fitting and needs to be removed. Using your X-Acto knife, carefully cut with the wood on both surfaces of each joint, carefully removing the excess. Be careful not to cut all the way through your joints. Now you can fit the rail into the jam. If the rail doesn't fit, check which side is too long and use your sandpaper to reduce the size of the rail piece. If there is a large discrepancy in size preventing the rail from fitting, you may need to disassemble and start over. If it fits, you're ready to put the finishing touches on your window. We're ready to complete this project by installing the glass. Grab the old CD-ROM case and disassemble. You can use either the top or bottom of the case. We're going to need to cut all the edges off the case so we have a perfectly flat sheet of clear plastic. For this, we're going to use the utility knife. As you cut, you can use the edges as a guide to keep your cut straight. Your cuts should be very light. You're just scoring the plastic. You may need to do this a few times. Lightly scoring the plastic prevents this brittle plastic from chipping and cracking. You've cut deep enough when you can easily snap the plastic along the score line you cut. Do this for all four edges of the sheet. Place the completed rail on your work surface with the back side facing up. Place the sheet of clear plastic on top, lining the corner up with one corner of your rail. Set the plastic about 1 8 inch in from the outer edge of the rail. Make sure the plastic sheet is positioned squarely on the rail. Then mark the plastic 1 8 inch in from the outer edge on each corner that needs to be trimmed to size. Using your metal ruler, line up the measurement marks of the longer edge and draw a straight line. Line your ruler on the long line, and using your utility knife, lightly score along the line. You may need to cut this score line several times. Then, carefully snap the two pieces of plastic apart. Now, connect the measurement lines for the shorter edge and score and snap this as well. A word of caution, this plastic can be very brittle, so be very careful as you handle it. It can break very, very easily. Place your rail back side up on your work surface. Verify the plastic will properly fit your rail. Then apply a small drop of the hot glue to each corner of the plastic and press onto the rail working quickly to ensure you've centered the plastic and no edges of the plastic stick out further than the rail. Flip the rail over and place it plastic side down and press hard on the surface to ensure a tight connection. The grill of this window consists of two pieces that cross each other in the middle. I'm using two pieces of 332nd inch by 332nd inch basswood that I ripped to size. You can size your pieces using your metal ruler, but I find it much faster to just eyeball these cuts. Insert one end of the board up against the inside of the rail and rest the other end on the other rail. Mark as best you can the appropriate distance on the grill piece then use your X-Acto or utility knife to cut the piece. Repeat this step for the other cross piece. In order to get a realistic looking grill, you need to cut a notch out of each cross piece. To do this, you need to mark the middle of each piece with a ruler, then place another piece of wood of the same size centered on your mark. Mark with your pencil on each edge of the piece of wood then, using your X-Acto knife, carefully cut halfway through the cross piece. You will need to make two cuts. Now, flip the piece of wood on its side and carefully cut the notch of wood out. 
you should have a groove cut out of the wood large enough for your other cross piece to fit into. Repeat these steps on the other cross piece. When done, verify the pieces fit flush with each other. If you manage to get a really tight fit, you can install the grill with no glue. But if they're a little loose, you'll need to apply a tiny amount of your hot glue to each piece to ensure it stays in place. We're finally ready to put our two completed pieces together. You'll first want to determine how far in you want your rail assembly or sash to be. For this project, I want the sash to be set in 1 8 inch from the outside edge of the jam. To do this, I took a piece of leftover grill wood and measured 1 8 inch and marked the wood. Slide the rail assembly into your jam, making sure the side marked left is on your left and the arrow is pointing up. Also, make sure the plastic is facing away from you as you slide the assembled rail piece in. Use the piece of wood you marked to push the sash in, making sure not to push too far. Do this on all four corners until you're satisfied the sash is uniformly set in. When you're satisfied, you may now flip the assembly over and apply small dabs of hot glue along the seams of the window. Be careful not to push too hard or you'll push the sash out and then you'll have to reset it. Clean off any excess glue that may have gotten on your window and let the glue set. You now have a perfect classic brownstone window suitable for use on your next diorama. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Make sure you subscribe below for more. Next time, I plan on showing how to build a functional brownstone double hung window just like this one. Until then, this has been Tetris Brain Blast.